there's just alcohol in these mugs right now. Oh, would you look at that? Yeah, listen, we're we're doing. No th- wonder this, I've been feeling kind of funny this, lately. Oh, I, I don't even know. I've what, been feeling funnier. Yeah, funnier. Well, n- n- let us know. We've been drinking a little bit. Is he, is, is Nick funnier? This is an episode that I think is probably going to be our most controversial. <laughs> At least a little no, bit in, ter- in terms of no. our choice on the movie, I we don't. seem to we <laughs> seem to be somehow in the minority. Surprisingly, uh, this is we're we're okay. So this is the we're doing the episode on the new alien, the alien I, Romulus. We did our whole thing with Erica. <laughs> you guys remember that we did our whole thing with Erica uh, with the pinball stuff and yes. talking about that it was a huge thing. We both love Alien. We love the Alien franchise, despite how bad some of them get. There's there's some charm to it. <laughs> They're all bad, all right? Can I go now? <laughs> we went and saw the new Alien Romulus. If you saw our little quick review we did in the car right after it, uh, you know that we weren't exactly the biggest fans of the movie. But now we've gotten some distance, and we're going <laughs> to give our thoughts. And who knows? It might surprise you. Released in 2024, directed by Fede Alvarez, famous for Don't Breathe. And Evil Dead. And Evil Dead, the 2013 one, right? Yes. Starring Kaylee Spaney, is that her name? I just call her Priscilla. Priscilla. Priscilla Presley. Girl from Alien, uh, not Alien, well, a girl from Alien Romulus, but girl from Pacific Rim 2. Pacific Rim 2. You remember, you remember how, like, at the end of Pacific Rim 2, it seems like, oh, she her thing was like, I never fit in, but I built my own Jaeger, my little mini Jaeger. <laughs> Maybe, like, I should pilot my own mini Jaeger, but then she ends up not doing it, and just some random bitch that's hardly in the movie pilots it, and you're like, what the fuck is earned here? And I just Char- remember... Charlie Day is like, Frank, I don't know, this is the best idea, man. Sh- D, you bitch. D, you bitch. You caused this, you fucking bitch. <laughs> you just gotta think, uh, that's how that's how Pacific Room 2 Priscilla, you bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Kaylee S- Spaney, Spaney as, I say, as yeah. Rain... David Johnson as literally the best part of this movie, Andy. Yes. Uh, shout out to him. Uh, Dora the Explorer as Kay. As the one who gets Elber said, fucked over the worst in yeah, this movie. she does. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately as well, she's, she's, well, not unfortunately. She's also in Sicario, Day of the Soldado. That's the first time I ever saw her. And she's like teenage, the teenage she daughter. Couldn't, she couldn't that. She's teenage daughter of one of the cartel members. And then they have to kidnap her be- to... Fake she, the, the second I, movie gets really fucking out there. It's funny. The first Sicario man is like so shitty and smudgy of like a script and just so greasy. But then it's done by like an amazing director with solid acting. And you're like, this is a really fun, like introspective, deep movie. That I, I never like. thought I'd hear Sicario described as fun. Archie Renault as Tyler. I guess he's the nicer British guy. Spike Fern as Bjorn. He's the meaner British guy. He's the asshole. And then we have uh, Eileen Wu, who's Navarro. Who's, she gets the she gets the honor of being Kane, basically. She, she gets to be Kane, yeah. <laughs> she was the other one that had like a lot of depth to her, and then unfortunately was like, She didn't have much to her. No. I, I, I like well, in the end, like she had some, but like not yet. I mean, she had le- she had a little bit less than I hate. Synthetics. I don't like synthetics. I don't like synthetics because f- my mom, my mom was sealed in a fucking mine. <laughs> <laughs> the synthetics made all my warm beer cold. I'm sure she could Harry Warden her fucking way out of that <laughs> Fuck, mine, bro. Don't dude, worry about it. Well, God, we're so off the rails already. Who cares? The- this movie is kind of off the rails anyway. But it's you it- made me warm beer cold. That's why <laughs> I hate synthetics. I'm gonna smoke a joint <laughs> in <laughs> spice. I smoke it all the way into me lungs. Good casting though for yeah. those two because yeah. they're supposed to be cousins the two the two oh, dudes really? yeah, yeah. yeah um they, they look a lot alike actually yeah. the imdb summary consists of while fucking around with shit they shouldn't have been a bunch of stupid kids find a pissed off thing that kills them all <laughs> I which, which really can describe any <laughs> horror which any horror movie you know this, what i mean this is fede alvarez's Greatest hits. Yeah. You know, because there's the there's the nastiness from Evil Dead, mm-hmm. but the plot is very don't breathe. It's like a bunch of kids break into a place, 
to steal stuff yes. and then end up trapped there and picked off one by one. Yeah, it's not quite every slasher because, you know, a lot of the teen slashers, you know, it's like, what did they do? Besides, like, actually fucking around and trying to reinvent or, like, invite things, sometimes they're just in the woods on their own. They go the slasher route. Yeah, yeah, they go. Yeah, yeah and unfortunately, you going to the woods was a bad thing. Don't ever do that. Don't Just don't go into space either. Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll read the real one. While scavenging <laughs> the deep ends of a derelict space because people are going to be like, that's not the real fucking idea to be somebody. I don't are think you anyone sure? gives a fuck. Are you sure? That's exactly what happens. While scavenging the deep ends of a derelict space station, a group of young space colonists come face to face with the most terrifying life form in the universe. Perfect. Organism. So we got to see this <laughs> about a week ago now. Opening, a we, week. Saw that, we saw this opening night. Opening, opening Friday, right? Yes. Opening Friday. We were excited. We were hopeful. I mean, we, I wore my alien shirt. Not, we, to, not today. But not today. Uh, we, I wore it for alien We have review. been hopeful every time. I went to Prometheus hopeful. I went to Alien Covenant hopeful. I, 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 I was not expecting what we got, unfortunately. You know, I was, I was, I will say this. I was hopeful. I was really hopeful. And I think we both were. This looked like if, if it at least wouldn't be, if the story was going to suck, at least we were going to get something that looked like it would be super stylized and fun. And so I'd be willing to just be like, okay, whatever. You know, it's kind of a hard thing to do. I mean, every alien movie tends to just borrow from some of the originals and like, yeah, it's easy to go back and do it. If I may, this is the first time where it feels like the borrowing outweighed the actual and directors we'll, like we'll, we'll talk about that yeah if that if that makes sense because yeah. at the very least even though there's a lot of not good alien movies out there each of them are unique in their own way because they each have a different director behind them yeah and you know everyone shits on prometheus and like prometheus is just odd it's not i don't really consider it bad when i first saw it i was like this isn't that good but as time's gone on i've just been like ah, it's, it's just convoluted it's just weird and convoluted and there's like a crazy a amount lot, of ideas yeah. about creation and Eden and God and all kinds of stuff in there. And, but I appreciate them trying to do something a little bit different. Uh, covenant, Keyword try covenant tries to build on that and doesn't do the best. Um, this one, I'll do the fingering. <laughs> <laughs> this one, man, I, you know, there, there are some good oh, things okay. in it and, you know, we'll get into that when we talk about a little bit of the plot and stuff. I do have some nice things to say. There are, there's some yeah. really good stuff. The, the setup on all of this, I was in on. I was in. I oh, was sure. In. I sure. was. I had bought in. I had bought in for like the first 25 to 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. I was in. And then we got to a point. <laughs> and <laughs> it, 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 it's like, it's oh, like okay, oh. they did. Something happened, and then they never really recovered. They don't, it, it, not only do they recover, they kind of, they, what does Lydia they, say? They pick it up and they, run with it. They plummeted. They plummeted. <laughs> they, pick it, they picked it up and ran with it. Um, as parts kept falling off yeah, while they were running. Keep going, keep going. <laughs> uh, we I can mean, make it. Apart from that, I mean, we saw we saw it in a theater. It was mostly packed. No, it was good. No, normal cinema, Sm smaller theater, but it filled filled pretty easily. It filled pretty easily. Everyone was actually chill in there. I'm glad nobody was talking shit and shit. It sounded like our audience got into it a little bit. Yeah, that's good. I mean. People there love Alien. They, they're definitely going to watch it. And We're just going to issue a spoiler warning here. We're going to get into some shit. We really are. If you want to check the around. movie out, by all means, you should turn us off because we're going to get into it. They emphasize that Wayland yutani has just fucked everybody over, essentially. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we, we'll talk, but I, I, I do like how it seems like our characters grow up on. And uh, one of the things I was reading, Fede Alvarez did have this idea where uh, he, when he was watching Aliens, the 1986 sequel, he said one of the deleted scenes that is in there is a bunch of kids running around the colony right before all the aliens show up. I don't think that's a deleted scene. Oh, it? yeah, he said it was a deleted. He said it's a deleted scene. Huh. Oh, later restored from the special. Later ah, restored. Okay. Later restored. I apologize. And he says, yeah, there's that. And he goes. You know, that's, but this is like, you know, LV426. Those kids are gone. LV426 <laughs> has been terraformed, right? And like turned into a better place. What does it look like for a bunch of kids that live somewhere that hasn't been quite terraformed? This is a mining planet. This is slavery. This, this is, is a mining <laughs> planet where the sun don't shine at all, dude. Yeah. It, it might as well be Earth after after the machines took over in the Matrix. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. This place sucks. This, like people die of like... Lung disease Lung constantly disease on in the mind. Well, our main character, Rain, is trying to get off of it, and she recently has worked enough to be able to get transferred, except that 
She they, hasn't because they, the <laughs> goalposts get moved on her mid conversation nope, with, nope, with no, the agent. Don't. It's like, yeah, sorry, they actually upped your uh, requirements. Up your requirements. You know, that's your youth gone, right? Yep. So you have to find. So you're trying to find a way out. Uh, the opening scene, though, before there, just, <laughs> Nick, Nick fucking lost his mind at. But I, 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 I was more it. willing to accept it. I don't get it. Remember, when, like, remember how when Alien El- ended? Appara- apparently when Ellen Ripley blew up the Nostromo. Mm-hmm. Apparently when Ellen Ripley nuked the Nostromo. Three nuke. Three nuke. Three nuke blast. Like, j- it, it incinerated <laughs> the Nostromo. Didn't get Who would have thought that some rubble would be left over floating around in space? <laughs> they find, uh, there's a crew that finds oh. the wreck of the Nostromo, uh, and I guess finds the original. They find, they find Big Chap. They yeah. find the original alien uh, that from the one that burst out of John Hurt from the original movie. And Ripley blasted into space. I'm not sure why he ended up back next to the parts of the Nostromo. I don't know either. Who knows? I guess the alien swam over there in space. <laughs> and cocooned himself somehow cocooned into himself an asteroid? In the, in the, I don't know. Maybe it's like, you know how wasps like secrete shit to like make the nest? Maybe that's what it did. It like quickly secreted like it's something and made itself a little like bolder. Well, there are bugs. <laughs> yeah. Technically. A bug hunt. But th- this, yeah, so they find it. They open it. And then like while they're cracking it open, like this choir is singing in the background too. <laughs> It's, it's the, just looking right, and yeah. it's just, and it's just the alien, just yeah, like a fucking <laughs> just land like, there like, dead. like, like an Egyptian fucking, uh, like, uh, cool, hier- cool hieroglyph- shot. hieroglyphic, like, <laughs> just going like that, <laughs> Funk, funky, monkey. <laughs> He's a cool shot. Yeah. This, the cinematography in this movie is great. Yep, I, the, the, it's a, it's a, it's a pretty good looking alien movie. Mm-hmm. Better looking than something like AVP two, yes. where, where you couldn't tell what was going on, but. Um, <laughs> Um, even to a lesser extent, um, Alien Covenant, where mm-hmm. that implored a lot of shaky cam as well. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. Right. So they find it, and then we're we're cutting to Rain and her brother. Turns out it's not her brother; it's an android that Andy, a synthetic Andy, Andy the android. I get it. That her father reprogrammed to like take care of her because they both fucking died. They, Mom and dad are dead. Mom dude. and dad are dead, <laughs> and she's offered an opportunity by I guess her. Were, are they exes? Maybe. I, don't I, I, I have no idea. Like they, uh, it seemed like they had a history. We, we found like a, a ship in orbit so, above us. Like a space station, like, actually. No, no, they don't know it's a space station. Oh, yeah. yet. They think it's a ship. It's yeah. just in orbit and it's abandoned. We can go up there. We can break in and get the um, cryopods. We can get the cryopods. We can get the <clears> stuff <throat> to fuel the cryopods, essentially. And it'll help us just leave this planet because yep. this planet is apparently years away. From, from everything else. From, from everything else it's that's an better than it. You yeah, know? it's an island. We mostly need Andy because he is an android and he can get us access to this ship. He can talk to Mother because Mother is still around, if you remember. Mm-hmm. But it's a big, it's a big Wayland yutani program, yep. essentially. And uh, it, it, one of the things I did like, you know, when they came up with like the Mother, it said M-U-T-H-R, like E-R. Mother, Mother, and it said 9001. It's like how nine thousand. Ah. It's like mother nine thousand. <laughs> mother nine thousand and one. <laughs> I love David Johnson as Andy in this. He's, he's the, the best. He's thing, the man. best thing in this movie. He does an incredible performance. It's eventually. We'll get to this later. Eventually, he has to play like two different parts. Yeah. Um. Be, but when we first meet him, he's. He's so likable. Mm-hmm. He's just this derpy android. He's with he's, tons of dad jokes. Yeah. He, he, lots of unnecessary dad jokes but ultimately is just a companion and protector to rain and she even calls him her brother yeah and he's got nothing but helpfulness and care care for her and it just wants everything he does is for her essentially the prime directive is to help do what's best for rain and she is one of those humans in the future that is perfectly fine with treating a synthetic equally essentially you know she 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 looks at him as if she were he they were related you yeah. know they, they they have a nice relationship he's very endearing mm-hmm. and he's just a little slow because he's kind of like a decommissioned type of android that he's got some problems yeah he's a little not malfunctioning or anything he's just kind of past the times or something yeah. like that he's, he's an old he, model he's an old model that kind of maybe got tossed around a little yeah. bit you know yeah but i i love him in this so much he like he knocks it out of the park it's it's her andy it's the two brits and it's well five because he doesn't count 
Oh, you bastard. <laughs> And then there's... They got my warm beer cold. He's Isabe- not a real person. Isabella Merced. As, who's, who's pregnant, by the way. Is, is pregnant and Tyler's sister. Yeah. Tyler and Bjorn are cousins. And then Navarro, who's Eileen Wu, is the girlfriend of Bjorn. I, that's yeah. how they're all connected. Yeah, I guess. I just don't. I just don't know how Rain is connected to any of them. Like I, I, I was assuming that Rain and Tyler used to be a thing. Yeah. Or something. They go up to the ship, and it's not a ship. It's a space station. Just, that's, just that's, free. That's no moon. That's no moons. That's your mother. <laughs> and it's just kind of in free orbit. It's abandoned, and they're like, "Let's get on this bitch and jack it." These idiots go in, and they're like, "All right, Tyler." Bjorn and Andy. Andy, we need you to get us in. Get us in. So they go aboard. The ladies stay on the ship. Find the cryo beds and they're out of cryo fuel. Yeah, to, they, to, already there's a problem. There's not enough fuel to get them to where they want to go. The hyperdrive is leaking. Really? No, I was making a fucking Phantom Menace joke. It's like, we'll have to set her down somewhere. Tatooine. It's way out of the way. We're sitting ducks up here. There's ducks in this galaxy? <laughs> the ducks in the galaxy. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, guys. Let's go play ball. <laughs> <laughs> Why is there ball in Pants of Venice? I guess it would be not even space ball. Let's go play space ball. Yeah, you know, and Attack of the Clones or uh, Revenge of the Sith, that you see the ET aliens like yeah. in the Senate. Wouldn't it be great if the xenomorphs were just there? <laughs> but instead of like actually like being like civil yeah. and shit, they're just attacking people. <laughs> this would be the last time the xenomorphs were invited to the Imperial Senate. <laughs> So I threw the Senate at him. <laughs> the whole Senate. <laughs> True story. They're going to find the, uh, basically the cryo fuel storage room. And it turns out the reason that all the cryo fuel is in this room is that this station, which is divided into two sides, which is Romulus and Remus. They're on the Remus side right now. If you remember, uh, if you're into history like I was, that was the foundation of, the Ro- of Rome, was the mythology that a pair of twins... Romulus and Remus were dumped in a river and then a female wolf nursed them and took care of them and they would be the founders of Rome. Turns out there's the reason all the uh, fuels in there is because they're they have they wanted to freeze they have, the place. They have about 70 face huggers that are <laughs> are frozen in these little sacks. They were like, well, we're going to need all the fuel to do that. So they start ejecting the fuel and all yeah, of a guess sudden, what, yeah, guess, guess what, what starts defrosting. Yeah, guess what they did with Big Chap from the original Alien? They started they, they started experimenting on I him. I guess they cloned him and started experimenting. I don't even know how they got the face. How would they get the face? Did they make a queen? Maybe like they, how? <laughs> maybe they went back to LV426 and picked him up. They mm-hmm. have the same like blue light that they had from Alien 1. They had all, all kinds of callbacks. And you know what? We'll leave the basic plot here and we're just going to skip okay, around yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, we can skip around, but I love that you brought up the callbacks here. And the blue, need, and the blue we, light. We do need to talk about the callbacks. Because... My fucking God <laughs> is this movie begging to be labeled a greatest hits of not just Alien, but the franchise as a whole. The franchise. The whole fucking franchise is in this movie, is referenced. Every reference in this movie is from every fucking Alien movie. It, that sometimes is not an issue. It is when the movie stops dead in its tracks to make said references. It's also... And the most... Yeah. And I'm sorry, but the most... Uh, we just got to bring it up now. The okay. most egregious moment of that is when poor Ian Holm shows up. <laughs> okay. We do need to talk about this. And I, I think we might agree. Nick, how oh, are you... Before, no. before we saw this dude, how were you with the movie? Were you on board? Were you like, okay? Okay, okay. so when I found out it was going to be a bunch of teenagers in space, I was like, all right, they're doing a slasher movie. Yeah. They're doing a slasher movie in space. The trailers I was not too impressed with because a lot of them were just kind of the same. Yeah. Looking back, I know why. Because they wanted to save the big finish. Mm. Like, they didn't want to yeah. give any any of that away. No. I, I, if Fede Alvarez doing an alien movie sounds like exactly what it is. And that is some of what we get. Yeah. And the it, rest of what we get is studio notes. <laughs> and also, but I do want to say this movie had a little bit of an issue when it was in production. Um, it was not, it was originally, originally slated for a Hulu release. Like Prey. Yeah, Prey. It was not going to release theatrically. It was going to be a straight to streaming release. And that changed late 2023. They decided they were going to do this and say, okay, you know what? Uh, last part of 2023, we're going to put this thing in theaters. And I think... I don't know if that's where things got went wrong or things went wrong beforehand. And I, 
if we're going to talk about the most egregious thing, before we see this thing, I was on board with the movie. I was like, okay, I'm willing to see where this goes. And then Ian Holm showed up. And from the back from the dead, apparently. back from the dead, they did the same Not thing. Not looking as, very same good. thing as they did with Rogue One, where they put Peter Cushing, yes, and his Grand Moff Tar- Tarkin. They had retro Princess Leia, yes, Hope, um, all kinds of shit. But dude, this does not look good. They have now with Rogue One. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but with Rogue One, I'm I was I'm still on board with that. I'm still okay with okay. those. I'm because not, <laughs> they use them sparingly at the very least, and they use them well. What they do to Ian Holm in this looks horrific. I am. I listen. I am now very much like I was before, but I'm 100. percent This should be illegal. I am 100% on yeah. board. You should not be able, as a studio, to use an actor's likeness after they have passed in perpetuity. I do not care that they played a character. I do not care that you own that character in perpetuity. You should, this should be illegal to do. I do mean that. This should not be allowed. I, I no, after this, don't agree. Especially. Yeah, like th- this, is, this is one thing that we should not be allowed to do. This is this all start, they, they didn't take, this all start because Jeff Bridges. Yeah, they take <laughs> and try. Sure. I mean, but Jeff Bridges is alive. De-aging. Okay, you want to de-age someone. But he looks creepy as shit. I know. That's what I he looks creepy well, as shit. I'm trying to like see Ian Holm looks worse than this. Well, okay, you want to talk about that? We can talk about the Irishman, how they de-aged De Niro. Oh, that was bad. I mean, and the same thing with Pesci. It doesn't look good. But I mean, like, there's consent of the actors to do that, right? Yes. You want to use their likeness, fine. I mean, Crispin Glover sued Universal for this in Back to the Future Part 2. They sued, he sued and he won because it was like, you used my prosthetics from the original movie. You used molds in my face. I didn't want to be in Back to the Future Part 2. You should not be able to take a, an actor and slap his actual, my actual face and prosthetics on there. Do you want to do it and make it kind of look like me? Fine. It's kind of like that. But to use your actual face and mold and stuff like that that is right in perpetuity is illegal. And he won. He, I believe he won that lawsuit. Mm-hmm. And so, like, now you sit here and you say, now we can do this CGI-wise with anyone we want. Is that okay with you? It's not okay with me. I mean, it's, it's, AI is also, yeah. also already, already causing problems. But you want to you talk about, like, should you be able to use a dead actor's likeness? And say, well, we own the character. It's insane. I don't even care if his like estate gave credit. It's just, it's just not right. I, I consider it very uncanny valley and grotesque. I consider it grotesque. It's a little. You might as well dig up the body. It, it, that's what it looked like, honestly. <laughs> it, it didn't look good. And we'll we'll be clear here. It's an android that one of them that has been returned back on one of the androids that got fucking destroyed. I guess that when the when the uh, space Zeno, station xenomorph was running yeah. around the Spo- ship spoilers um the the reason the space station is abandoned is at fill in the blank here <laughs> <laughs> they shot the xenomorph and i guess it just ejected all of the blood out of its body and burned a hole straight through the floor everyone is dead oh dude everyone's fucked or everyone or whoever was left made it out and now they're floating in space being last log of the <laughs> i want someone to make a cut of just like like some sort of carnage and like terrible things happening to the characters and it just cuts to Ellen Ripley just <laughs> Dude, we sleeping need to, in her make, cryopod. Let's make a cut of that. We'll just like, oh my God. <laughs> mean with the Ellen cam in the bottom right corner or something like that. Just like, she's she's sleeping, man. She's chill. Oh, look at Jonesy. Oh, it's so sweet. Oh. <sighs> Dr. Sleep just had a guy that kind of looked like young Jack Nicholson do it. A little bit. Yeah, I mean, and you know what? Okay, fine. Like, right. All right. You know, he doesn't quite look like him, but we all know who it's supposed to be. And it's not like an abomination to do that. It's like, okay, I get what you're trying to go for here. No, this is the abomination. This is the dude. abomination. This is uncanny valley to I an extreme. Care for this. If we were, if I was to ever say that some person is synthetic, this is a synthetic. Because this is, this is not a real person. Because eventually they bring this android back, and this android is supposed to just look exactly like Ash. It's the from same. The mo- it's the same model. It's, it's the, the same model. model. So what they did is they had an actor portray the character. But they superimposed Ian Holmes' face. I'm assuming onto he wore a green mask or something. Something like probably or something. And it, it, but it's so distracting. It is very distracting. It doesn't look right. It, it does feels not look very good. odd. They use basically an AI voice modulator, I feel like, to help try to get his voice. And 
use some of the same lines. He keeps showing up in the movie. There's your other callbacks. He says, he says all the same fucking lines. Ash perfect, does. perfect organism. You, I like, can't I lie, lie to you about, about your, your chances, chances, but you have my sympathy. Fuck it's off. like, dude, I saw this all in the first movie. You don't need to bring this up. It's not right. Like this is this is just super uncanny valley. And he keeps coming back in the movie. Oh no, he's he's a, arguably the big bad. He's he keeps popping up in the movie too. Like it's not just a quick cameo or anything. Like cameo is a loose term because Ian Holm is dead, dude. I he's get long that, dead. And I get that they're trying to slam down like capitalism bad, company bad. But it's like okay, I I'm on board with capitalism bad. I'm on ba- board with company bad. Maybe have somebody else do it. I what, don't know. You or know, maybe have somebody that kind of looks like Ian Holm just do it. Okay, fine. I'm willing to do that. <laughs> It would have been great as if it was Michael Fassbender. Oh, yeah, that would have been great. <laughs> that I actually, respect- I would have been on board for that. Michael like, Fassbender, all right, yeah. all right, all right. You're not only tying Prometheus, Prometheus into it in one way, you're tying it in a second way. Because yep. they do tie into... The, it, it just the, spoilers, the black, they, the black they, tie, they tie into Prometheus They tie somehow. into black They goo. do, yeah. I don't like it. I, I understand people going, oh, it's not Doug It's not right, man. Okay, it's to, not. to fit Alvarez's like, defense, like, yeah. I don't think that was his idea. I really God, don't. I, I hope do, not, man. I, I, this I, I believe sounds in you, like, <laughs> This do sounds like it was a very big studio note. It yeah. sounds like it was a Disney thing, you know? The phrase I also hear, hear from when a couple of video essays is intertextuality, things that reference each other, and we definitely have gotten to a point because of nostalgia and because there's been a consistent amount of media through the years now where we can pretty much reference anything and because nothing's new is under the sun it's like all the shit before is substituted with references to other things wouldn't it have been great if the android was winona writer oh god <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm actually i'm on board with that you know what i would have applied tie in tie in resurrection i was like holy fucking shit no one thought that was coming back <laughs> good for you movie <laughs> i would have been on board if it was winona writer i would have been or michael, on board. Fa- or michael fast michael fassbender but ian home they're just like look how close we are to the first one this is the first one again this is a direct sequel to the first one don't you want to watch it after the first one? Not no, really. I want to watch the first one. Navarro gets a face hugger on her face. She gets the honor of getting the chest burster. Yeah. Essentially. I will say one of the best chest bursting scenes I've ever it seen. It is violent. Yes, it is it's violent good. and brutal. But not only that, the way the thing comes out of her chest, yeah. and the way it protrudes out of her bone, yeah. out of the bones of the uh, rib cage, yes. looks fantastic. It does. It's a really good chest good, bursting good scene. Good practical effects. I do want to say as well. Thank you. Yes, the practicals in this are amazing. I do want to say one of the things Fede Alvarez is he uh, he specifically went and looked for the crew of Aliens, 1986. Yes. And when they did the practical effects, they did the set design, the practicals, all of it. This is the thing, man. It looks good. There's a lot of really This is a good cool looking movie. Yeah. It's a gr- lot of phenomenal set design. There's a lot of really cool stuff. It looks good. It feels like Alien, like that analog punk style. And that it feels could like it. Just be your callbacks. It really That could. can be the only callbacks you need. But they they, they they just couldn't stop there. Not enough. More. Yeah, pretty much. More. And they they even More. do some they even do some cool new stuff. Like yeah. they show an alien actually like kind of birthing itself like into its full grown form. Oh yeah. You've never, I don't think we've ever seen that before. We've never seen where it grows up. That scene I thought was really good. Yeah. Yeah. It it grows from like a wall vagina. Yeah. Yeah. It's a wall. It's again, it it looks like keeping in touch with Geiger's original vision. HR HR Geiger in his grave was like, yes, I think he'd be proud of that moment. That was a good scene. He was. uh, So, you know, he did all that. And like, especially with the apparently same people that also helped do some of the video effects as well. The VFX. So same people that worked on aliens, if, a they, lot were, if of this, they were, if they're still around. Yeah. A lot of this is practical. The xenomorphs, they look good. The, the face huggers, a lot of them are practical too, especially during that, that set piece. Again, there's some good set pieces in this, uh, the set piece where they actually have to walk through the room of face huggers. Yeah. Where they, they up the, they, they up, up the temperature of the room. So they, this, the face huggers won't really notice them. Yeah. Cause apparently they're blind, but they heat sense. That's they the heat thing. sense. And that's how they're able to locate their, their prey. Their prey. Yeah. yeah. 
it, it's kind of like it when Robert Redford had to walk really slowly in that room in sneakers. Yeah, yeah. Except there's face huggers everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like that. They use silence really well in this movie. I will say that. Yeah, too. sound. Like, the sound in this movie dead does quiet. Good. Some of these, and they're like, I'm like, oh god, dude, this is actually really fucking intense. Some decent jump scares. Decent here jump and there. scares. Different decent use of sound. Also reading that uh, Fede Alvarez had like a soundboard connected to speakers around the set to just fuck with the cast play some xenomorph sounds when they're like recording and shit and get them off their edge, like some screams <laughs> and stuff, which is kind of like what everyone did to the poor people in Blair Witch. Oh yeah. <laughs> where they're just following them in the woods, fucking with them. Authentic, authentic. Jesus Christ. What the fuck is that, <laughs> man? <laughs> shoot it, shoot it. <laughs> oh my God. What the fuck is that? Oh what the God. fuck is that? <laughs> what is that? What is that? That's, I can't see. What is it? You're not showing it. What is it? <laughs> so scared. <laughs> it's not coming out of her nose. <laughs> I'm sorry to my cameraman. Sha Shaggy, why are you in the corner? I'm scared, man. <laughs> like, really scared. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> so it turns out, like, the way they... The, their big plan was to take the... Take they're trying the blood to, or the life force from the facehuggers and the xenomorph and make superhumans. And it's make, essentially, it's essentially the xenomorphs can't. The little facehuggers have the ability to create pure life. They, and they, so to they want well, to sustain themselves to to yeah. to um, heal themselves essentially, and that that's it. It's the black goo from Prometheus. Yeah. It's just that again. Yeah. So <laughs> they're trying to do it and. I, in between all of it, we get tons of callbacks. The they have the the burst rifle, right? Yes, they have um, Kaylee Spaney like getting taught how to use one of them, or just like aliens. just like just like an aliens. We got the shot of her like going back for Andy, like yeah. just the aliens. We have the blue lights on the floor, yeah, just like the eggs for no reason. Yeah, it's there for no reason. Doesn't really mean anything. I, I don't get why it's there. The worst one oh, is. Poor fucking Andy, dude. <laughs> okay, I'll I'll say this, but then I'll follow it up with something that I will praise that scene for. Yeah. Is Andy, at, do, at one point, he does say the line from Aliens, get away from her, you bitch. I believe the line is stay away from her, you bitch. It's get this away. Is, this is film class, right? No, <laughs> it's get away. It's get away, shut Scream up. Scream too. <laughs> Scream <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Mickey. You're the killer. <laughs> um, the fucking, Did no. you put your liver in the mailbox? Because I heard you put her liver in the mailbox. Anyway, continue. That's a pretty bad one. Yeah. And our audience actually like chuckled at that. I, you and I just were. St I'm sorry, but I was dead silent. I was like, that does not fit. Don't at do all. it. That was bad. I was like, Don't do it. It's like get away from her. And we both I'm like, no. That's and I was like, and I was like, okay, that's okay. That's stop, not good, but that's stop fine. here. And then he says, you, you bitch. But it's funny because he didn't know to do it. So it's like, you bitch. <laughs> I will say, Lucky though. Lucky my mom wasn't here. <laughs> like, that was, I hated that. I actually really didn't like we that also, at all. I, I thought that was really like, bad. Fuck. I will say this. I have never seen a xenomorph save a human before. Yeah. From certain death, just so they can kill them themselves. I got you. <laughs> it's, it's, it's kind of funny because like Kaylee Spaney is like fall at free falling to her death. She's gonna to die. Her death. She's, She's gonna, gonna die. And then an alien straight up like saves her oh. by like wrapping its tail around Spider Man her. style. It looks like it's say it, it almost kind of looks like it's it's an act of endurance. Honestly, yeah. just like I got you. You know, props to the movie. I've never seen that happen before. I've never seen a xenomorph just save someone before. <laughs> I thought that was kind of fun. Eventually. The movie ends up one big remake of Alien. Yeah. Because, and also kind of a redo of Evil Dead, because at yeah. the end of Evil Dead, everybody's soul has been claimed, and this abomination comes out of the yeah. earth and attacks our last survivor. Yes. You know, like is like crawling towards them, trying to kill them and everything. That is exactly what happens at the end of this movie. And yeah. It's also just big reference to like we got off the space station, we're free, we're done, we're on the ship and everything. What? There's something else on the ship. That's the first alien. They just yep. do that shit again. Yep. And except for this time, Isabel Merced has injected herself with the, some the, with the the Prometheus alien Google <laughs> trying to stay alive. And <laughs> because she's pregnant, it's somehow bonded with the fetus and creates something that is, I, again, I, I looked at Nick she, and I was like, she turns it, she creates Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> I was like, it's Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> it's this very long uh, human, humanoid alien. Yeah. But it's this alien, it's a xenomorph human hybrid. Which 
we have seen before because when that happened and it started we stalking both, yeah. uh, i looked at nick and i was like so this, this is just resurrection this again. is alien resurrection this is again. alien resurrection again <laughs> again that we've seen <laughs> there's so many greatest hits references to all the movies in the franchise it, it whether they're intentional or unintentional yeah. unintentional being we've seen some shit happen to a pregnant woman by being infected by an alien in mm. Alien vs. Predator 2. Yeah. They did that shit better than they did in this. Yeah. Motherhood and family and isolation from the first two movies run deep through the entire franchise. Okay? Those are the major themes. Isolation, other, motherhood, family, and humanity. Basically, those, those are always like the thing. Family. What makes us human? What makes us different than them? Why are they the other? How do we recreate? How do we make more of us? And what is so violent about uh, recreation, procreation? And every movie has hammered on that. Yeah. And now I feel like, dude, it's like, you, it's just redone again and again and again. And it's like, I've seen these so many times. All you get is an eye roll. All you it, get, and, uh, now, you know? and now it's just like, it's the same themes and it's okay. And I can't sit here. And like I said in our quick review, I can't sit here and say, it's not okay to do that because tons of things are derivative. Everything's derivative, right? Yes. Everything's under that. But it's the just egregious callbacks and it's the just shameless use of, of you know, a, a dead man's face. Yeah. And everything <laughs> that just makes this feel unforgivable. It's just unforgivable in my opinion. And it's like the movie never really recovered from, from that first thing with Ash that, we, that at least I saw that I saw and I said, it's never going to recover. And the problem was the stuff later wouldn't have been so fucking bad in my opinion. If the other thing hadn't happened, it would just been like, all right, whatever, whatever. I probably would have given this a much higher given rating. Given it a pass. Yeah. And been like, whatever, you know, I get it. But no, oh, man, that somehow doing that just exposed everything worse. I know. I know it, it, it props to the guy who plays the, what do they call it? The offspring that the, yeah. it's like a, this seven foot something like basketball player. Hang from, on, hang on, I got it. Uh, so the guy that, the guy that plays the offspring is Robert Bob Rotsky. Good for him. Bob, like, Bob Rock Zicky. <laughs> Bob Rock Zicky. Chodnovsky. Chodnovsky. <laughs> and uh, he's like this seven foot tall, human elongated. He's massive. He's a basketball player. You know, like, you know, humans, when they you extend them that long, even if they are that tall, don't quite look right. Uh, that's the thing. And uh, what, what, Javier Borte does the same thing. Oh, yeah. As soon as he, as soon as that creature from, showed up, from, like, I was know, just like, Wow, Javier, they got Javier Bote in this. Who's the dude that in America that plays the roles like that? Like Doug Jones. Doug Jones, yep. yeah. <laughs> and so it's like we have our characters that look like that. And, you know, it's like these skinny, elongated, something's wrong with them. Javier Bote was quarantined. Oh, sorry, um, that was wrong. He's wreck. He's, He's wreck. in wreck. He's in wreck and a couple others. He's in the scariest scene in wreck. Yep. <laughs> and this thing shows up and it is the best part of the some of the best parts of the movie i appreciate how there is a little bit of differences but it is just there's some creepy so there's some similar. creepiness there like they 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 filmed this thing pretty well at some point <laughs> when everyone saw it in the back hallway behind okay her. that that, the, that everyone that was in the, the theater was like oh my god <laughs> that was the loudest reaction of our theater is when is when Isabel Merced is just like, oh, oh, and then andy turns around sees the thing and we get our first shot of the thing and it's just the thing just like looking like in the hallway, like at them. Yeah. It just cuts to that thing. The lights are flashing and you see it. You yeah. can see it. Our whole theater was just like, ah, ah. oh my God. <laughs> they did good on him and he does a good job. Like yeah. I thought that thing was an animatronic for most of the part, but I was yeah. like, I was impressed to see that. No, that's an actor. They, they got him. They put him in all that stuff. Prosthetics and, and stuff. They did like good on that. We it's saw his just, dick. We saw his vagina. They, 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 and like at one point I was like, oh my God, his dick's out. <laughs> I wanted to like it. I wanted to be cool with it, but I was just like, this is Evil Dead again. Mm -hmm. This is Alien Resurrection again. This is the first Alien again. And you know what? At the end of the day, it's not that special. It's not as good. And it's and not Props that to them, props to the actor. Like they, they saved the craziness for last. But by then, I was just like, I'm. I was very done by the movie. Yeah, done nothing, with the movie like, by then. nothing on yeah. you, Robert, basketball player uh, Bob, Bob Zorowski. I, you're, you're, I, like, you did a really good job. Like, nothing on you. You played an amazing character you, actor. You, you, you made you, a good you, monster. You did. You made a great monster. 
that's our qualms with the movie. If you enjoy the movie and you're like, that's wrong, again, other people can have opinions. This is ours. We've explained why we had issues with the movie. If you yourself say the movie's great, uh, comment. Let us know your thoughts. Here's Perhaps. the thing. If enjoy it. If we're missing something, go ahead and tell us. I. But here's the thing. Are we missing something? Uh, the movie's certainly not missing I'm anything. Not, I, I don't feel like <laughs> they, we're missing they, anything. They made sure they checked I every that, box. I think this dude. comes down to just a matter of opinion at this point. Yes. It's really just opinion. And you know, if you love it, good for you. Do it uh, all power to you. Enjoy it. Like what you like. Seriously. Should we move to the facts section? I would love to. All right. These are real facts about the movie that I've researched and written down. Nick has never seen these before, and he's going to read them live for you. And again, these are real facts, just with some other nonsense included. Fact number one. Alien Romulus was released on August 15th, 2024, to a $42 million opening weekend. As of writing this, it's earned a total of $56 million domestically and a total of $124.5 million worldwide. Some of its competition in this summer and fall of 2024 included D.D., who Erica went to school with the director of... Wolverine, Deadpool and Wolverine, which Nathan got bored in, but liked Wesley Snipes. Spoilers. <laughs> Spoilers. Who cares? And Cuckoo, starring some family drama. <laughs> <laughs> so internationally, it sits at 68 million internationally. It's done go. It's done well. For it's itself. done well. It's definitely going to be more. I'm sure it'll, you know, give it a couple more weeks. It'll, it'll pass uh, a, a bunch of other things. Uh, Nick, let's take, we, we did this for long legs, but let's take a look at some of the, uh, top movies, domestic gross, highest grossing of 2024. You remember a couple, right? Number one, what do you think it is? It's inside out. It's inside out. Clearly. Number two, dethroned, is de dethroned dead, is Deadpool. Deadpool Wolverine is now number two. We're sitting on number two inside out. Um, total gross is 644 million. Deadpool is at 563. Ooh. This is domestically. Um, Despicable Me 4. Yep. Yeah. Sitting at 344 million. So the the really the first two pulling away from everyone else, um, you know, universally. I have my issues with Deadpool Wolverine. Uh, you know, I, I enjoyed parts of it. Don't at me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> let's not go down that road right now. We've been drinking a little bit. Let's not do it. Uh <laughs> Sitting at number four, Dune Part Two, uh, two hundred eighty-two. Twisters comes in at number five now, right on two hundred forty-four. Alien Romulus currently sits at twenty-fifth uh, with you know about sixty-eight million. Uh, it's still coming up. You it's know. it's very recent release. Yeah, yeah, it's still coming up uh, a little bit more it's as of recording date. Yeah, and this is just domestically. There's definitely you know if you were to give other things a chance it definitely will get there night swim is <laughs> let's check it on our annual night swim checker uh counter here it's done night it's swim. done it came out in january what are you checking it for is that 32 <laughs> we sit at 32 <laughs> for night swim will it make a comeback <laughs> doubtful is it on netflix now I, it's, it's somewhere on it's somewhere now you need to we, no, you, it's on prime you now. need to watch we need to watch night swim fine Let's see how Borderlands did. Where's that at? <laughs> Borderlands is at 59. <laughs> <laughs> Borderlands oh, is down, dude, no. at 59, oh. man. Oh, no. How uh, right does that sound? Yeah, Maxine's only at 58, actually. <laughs> Maxine beat Borderlands. Yeah. <laughs> Barely. It's not sitting well. But, I mean, Maxine's Maxine. I, I don't doubt it. You know it's right below Borderlands? The re-release of Phantom Menace. <laughs> <laughs> we went to that. Well, we helped contribute for that. <laughs> yeah, we're on to the what a story mark. This is the most interesting fact. I, this is the most interesting fact I found about the movie. Don't look at it. That I've researched. And Nick has never read this before. And he's going to read it live for you and give you a rating. And again, in the vein of our hero, Tommy Rizzo. <laughs> what a story mark. The film's production design draws from previous films in the series but also the Alien Isolation video game, including the emergency communication stations, which served as save points in the game. Fede Alvarez said he played the game around the time Don't Breathe was released, and later said, I was playing and realizing how terrifying Alien could be if you take it back to that tone. Which we at this podcast agree with. But why did you use Family Guy style references as well? <laughs> yeah, he said the thing. He, he said, said the thing. He said the bitch. Oh my god! Listen, we 
both, I mean, we, we played the Alien Isolation game together. We both love it. We'd love to replay it. It's, it's phenomenal. I, I have been replaying it on Steam. Great. Oh, hell yeah. I can't believe it's been 10 years, dude. It's so much fun. Does it still give you anxiety playing it sometimes? Oh, I'm a bitch, dude. I, I put it on the easiest mode. Oh, my God. We played it on the hardest mode. Remember when I was like, we played it on the hardest mode, we don't play it at all? Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> that shit was scary, dude. That was, that was fear. Joey, inducing. Joey, Joey, you need to stop punching the androids. <laughs> they will kill you every you remember, time you remember how we got into like an almost fight over it and i was like stop doing it and you were like i've <laughs> seen he's like i've seen people online dude it's like they're probably playing at a lower level <laughs> <laughs> this is like you couldn't get past the xenomorph at one point so he just like decided to stand under the ducks for it <laughs> just wait for it to come down just be like booga 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 <laughs> That 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 game is actually scary. There's a few times like I, I do remember when the Xenomorph first comes out, the amount of panic in all of us. Like, oh, oh, oh. What I was like, run, everybody, run, dude, everybody, just run, keep just your just fucking run. voice down, keep your fucking voice down. It's gonna hear you. <laughs> and I was like, run, run, Joey, run. It's just like sprinting, and we hear, no, no, not at the Xenomorph, Joey. He runs up to punch it. Ha <laughs> 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 bitch. <laughs> You have died. Yep. <laughs> Your turn, Nathan. Yeah. God damn it, Joey. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> man, yeah, we, we we love that 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 game, and we again, you as you talked about, that could be the references. Those save stations, those emergency communications with the little pop out card that you put in, could easily just be the references. That'd That's enough of a reference for a video game, right? Yeah. They went overboard. Yep. They they overdid it. <laughs> oh my god! This is as crazy as the time Ellen Ripley had to escape from Ash and the other thing. Well, this is the same thing. <laughs> Come back to it. <laughs> Out of five marks, I'm going to give you a solid two. Fair enough. It's just, it, it's kind of funny, but it, it, that's probably where, ironically, that's probably where I'm thinking. Just like, you hit the nail on the head a little too hard. Like, there's no joke here because it all is Family Guy style references. This is the equivalent of one of those big haunted house events. Okay. Put on by Universal or Six Flags, etc. I see where you're you know, going with this, but you, explain. You, you know what I mean? Like, but this year they were like, we're doing Alien. You gotta walk quietly through the room of face huggers. You gotta avoid the cool light effects that are, that is the acid blood floating around. Don't touch it. There's the dead alien hanging by the chains in that one scene. Yeah. Which is kind of funny because they're like, well, how did we miss that? That yeah. thing was there the whole time. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> just like, there's, the de there's a dead alien prop like hanging by the chains and whatnot. There's the, the, the tons of shots of people just cocooned, you yeah. know, having like chest, their chests bursted open. And here's the blue lights too. Yeah. And it, why? From Pink Floyd. Why? <laughs> What? Why were the blue lights there? <laughs> because it's a haunted house attraction. There's this Disney animatronic of Ash <laughs> that you got to watch. He's in the room and you got to walk past him as he's, you know, perfect. Move, oh, as, he's, as he's moving around <laughs> like a Pirates of the Caribbean animatronic giving all his lines. Yep. Fair enough. That's what this movie is to me. There's some solid setup. There's some decent world building in the beginning and I'm on board. And then if. If you can watch it and not be taken out of the movie, you probably really enjoy this. But for me, it took me right out of the movie, and every uh, every small thing after became a cardinal sin. I was taken out every cardinal time, sin. Dude. It just became something I couldn't get past. And again, you can say, "Well, I don't have the same morality on using dead actors' faces," and that's okay. We all have different morality. I'm a good person, and you're not. But <laughs> regardless of any of that, <laughs> regardless of any of that. If this movie didn't have those references, it would just be kind of decent, I feel like. It'd it would be, okay. be somewhere in the middle. We would praise this movie for its stylization and its effects and its background. We would pay, praise it for set design, costuming, and everything. We, that's what we would do. Unfortunately, it has those things and everything else is just lost. And it's like, it's like everything that good that was in it is almost a little tarnished. And I'm really sorry about that. And that's how I see it. Yeah. I don't particularly enjoy this. I'm not going to go see it again. You know what? I, I, there's really only one thing that's seen this. I'm going to give this a 50. 50? 50. 50. 50%. The 50% I liked is all of the set design, some of the story, some of the basic ideas and, and effects. The 50% I didn't like was everything else. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let me give it a 65. 65? Yeah. I... I'm with you. I'm a little more forgiving than you, but I wasn't crazy about this. 
This is better than some other Alien movies. I will give it that. Sure, sure. But there's others that you can easily just watch or rewatch again if you've seen them again. 50 plus 65 divided by 2, 57.5. 57.5 for Alien Romulus. It's low, dude. I'm sorry. I'm are sorry. we? Are we, though? I want to play a new game for the end of this, which is... Can we come up with a better version of this story? And it's not us. I asked chat GPT, hey, could you write a better version of Alien Romulus for me? What do we want to do? And it gave me some interesting ideas. He goes, sure. Let me write a sequel to Alien Romulus involving the Xenomorph, uh, involving Xenomorphs for the Alien franchise, expanding on the existing lore while introducing new elements to keep the story fresh. Here's a basic outline you may consider. Setting. Establish a new or familiar setting, perhaps a distant colony, a research facility on a distant planet, or even a space station where the remnants of the previous xenomorph incidents are being studied. Okay, we got some similarity. There similarity there. Plot. This could involve this develop a central conflict. Something new that hasn't been introduced is the use of xenomorphs as some kind of biological weapon. Mm -hmm. There's an idea. There's an they, idea. Yeah, what? where Wayland Utani finally succeeded in turning them into weapons. Into obtaining, a weapon. Obtaining them and like finally like using them in the field or something. Just like the Velociraptor. They're trying to make the Raptors Vincent, weapons. Yeah. Just cast Vincent D'Onofrio yeah. in this alien movie too. <laughs> what if <laughs> I'm trying to reestablish the pecking order? <laughs> uh, characters. Introduce the mix of the characters, including some old, some new, maybe a soldier, a scientist, or old survivors. They did that shit in Dominion. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Bring so, the old and the new together. So what what I'm ex, ex, exact so what if this is really pitching is a requel is a requel. what I see like. Yeah. And so what they're saying is can we create a better version of this by using callbacks maybe in a different way? And I actually a little on board. Can we see the Xenomorphs be used as a biological weapon? That would be interesting. That would be interesting. Imagine that released on like an army that's not, <laughs> or a system that won't fall in line. What would it look like if the Wayland yutani police force is xenomorphs? <laughs> is guys with xenomorphs like dogs? Yeah. That would actually be kind of an interesting idea. Just say, yeah, because this franchise has been mimicked, has, has basically mimicked itself over and over and over again. It's just like, I wouldn't consider this jumping the shark at this point. I no. would just be like, at least this is something fucking new. No, nope. my do, idea. Do it. Go fucking nuts with idea, it at this point, you man. You set it after Aliens and Alien 3. You set it after Aliens and Alien 3. They've recovered shit. They've finally succeeded in creating these things. They've abandoned some of this other Prometheus shit, and they go, this is our police force. There we go. There we go. They, they, basically, we have a, a handler and like three xenomorphs per person. <laughs> and you might be asking like how are they getting all these things well it's they're kidnapping i can even expand on this they're kidnapping poor people people that don't matter people that don't and matter, face hugging them and face hugging them to create these things because no one cares if they go missing yep there we go there's a plot i'd be willing to watch sorry we just came up with a new xenomorph idea isn't that alien resurrection again a little bit <laughs> a little bit but that, that was all clones and shit too Remember Not just they were clones, but, clone they, but they were they were breeding xenomorphs by just kidnapping people. Yep. Yeah. yeah. But I think you can, you know, you can go down the line and do that. And instead of having it be this intimate bit, you know, horror, maybe you can make something a little bit bigger again. Yep. I don't know. Thank you for watching this episode of the One and a Half White Guys podcast. Be sure to like, follow, and subscribe to us wherever you get your podcasts from. Don't forget to follow us on our YouTube at One and a Half White Guys on our TikTok at one and a half white guys podcast and Instagram at one and a half white guys podcast. And be sure to check us out on Spotify at one and a half white guys. And be sure to tell a friend to listen to the podcast where we say we're going to talk about a movie and we really lay into that movie sometimes, <laughs> don't we? <laughs> we? We talked about nothing but the movie this time. <laughs> Get away from here, you bitch. <laughs>